for various stuff. Um, that's not me. So, I am the ISL president, and I will run the membership meeting in five minutes after uh, Tsuyoshi Takagi has uh, presented the program chairs report. Hold on. I, 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 <laughs> okay, so I'm Swiss Shakai, program co chair this year. So uh, another co chair is Thomas so, Ferran. So he, he, he is uh, currently coming to this conference and I will present so, this so, program co chair report this year. Okay, Asia Grid this year is 23rd so, annual international conference. And the, the first uh, Asia Grip started in 1999 in Japan, and so, so there are several uh, Asia Grip conference um, in China, and this is the first time in Hong Kong. Okay. <coughs> and uh, so this is a statistic of the number of submissions. So in the 90s, we had about 100 submissions. And after 2000, it increased a lot, so about so at most 314. After that, so now it's around 250. So this year, we have 243. So it is a scale of now. <coughs> and uh, this is a number of submission by countries. The so most so submission comes from so China. And the second one is uh, USA, and so last year USA was the number one country so in the sense of submissions. But this year, from many in China, due to Hong Kong, I guess. And so then, German, France, Japan, and so on. So this is a, a similar phenomenon from last year. And so this is a statistic. So number of submission by subject. So we have many submission in public cryptography and cryptographic protocols, and then, so, symmetric cryptography. And this year, interesting, so, we have many submissions, post quantum cryptography, and so on and so like this. <coughs> then, so, <coughs> okay, and we have accepted 67 papers. From last year, we studied the so parallel session, therefore, we so accept more paper than so before. Now, the so six, seven paper has been accepted, and the distribution is like this. So, we have the cryptographic protocols paper, and so symmetric key, and post quantum key, and so on. Okay? And so, in Asia Grip 2017, we have 48 so PC members. So, so I'd like to thank the people so, who contribute to reduce the papers. So this is a whole member of 48 PC members. And moreover, we have so 334 <laughs> external here. Of course, you cannot be these members. So I'd like to thank so, so them to help review the papers. OK, so this year, we have so some, some new trial in, in, in Asia Grip 2017. So, in the, so uh, we, we introduced the debutal phase from last year. This year we accepted so 146 papers for second review. And so in the so second review, sometimes so there is no updated comment for final decision. Then so this year we try to make a summary of the second review phase and we ask the PC member to write some, so, such as how many, and so sent to the author in the rejected, so in the second place. And it helps so, to the author to develop their paper further. And so, as I said, so this year we have also a parallel session where we accept many papers. In total, 67 papers. And so, something new is also here Best PC Member Awards. So, we try to encourage the, the PC member to do more active. So review process. And so we have selected to so PC members, Takahiro, Matsuda, Are you here? Matsuda-san? Ah, yeah, okay. Congratulations. <laughs>
He's having a Skype call next door. Ah, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, congratulations. <laughs> okay. And so as you see, so in the so single track, so we have, so PC member has selected the so best paper award to this paper, and so two run ups are to this paper. And they are recommended to submit their so revised version to journal quick policy. And so this so selection has been done by voting in the PC member. And, uh, and so congratulations for this paper. And so in Asia 2070, we have three excellent invites talks. And two has been already done. And so tomorrow we will have a, this third invite talk by Pascal Payet. So he will talk about white box for crypto money. So please encourage to come here. And finally, <coughs> I'd like to thank the general so called chair, Stanka one, and see you so here. No? You are not here? Ah, okay. And so also, so Lucas and Hassan has very so made an out of effort to organize this conference. Lucas and Kassan are not here? Oh, <laughs> well, they are very busy now. And also some more thanks. So I'd like to thank them so they are very tremendous effort to success for the conference. Okay, then so special thanks to all authors. So who, who, uh, who submit this uh, so paper to this conference and session chairs. And so all the participants, so thank you for coming to this conference. And uh, so we hope that you enjoyed the Asia Crypto 2007. So thank you very much. fee 
which we use to run the organization um, specifically for the central cost. The cost that is at conference, that course, the conferences will of course be uh, built to the individual conferences. But in case you forget <coughs> to go to an ISA conference in one year, which I will not hope, you can also register next during the next calendar year online and become a member there. So I mentioned already the board of directors that has um, about 20 members. We have um, a list online, everything is on the website. The website, by the way, is one of our main activities that we run uh, because it's the one and only communication vehicle that we are uh, using. So the Journal of Cryptology, which is uh, the journal of the association, the current editor-in-chief is Kenny Patterson. The access for you as a member of the society to the papers that are published there is possible through the ISCR I'm clicking on the wrong thing here. Uh, through the ISCR website in a in an area where you say publications and then you go to the access of the publications and uh, where you have to authenticate with your ISCR password. That will give you access to the publications. If you want the paper then when you register for the first time for a particular and you become a member for a calendar year, you'll have to pay some extra. As you see. But in order to save some trees, not many people, or office space, not many people actually opt to receive the paper copy. There is a new journal, uh, two actually, two new journals that we have started in ISCR, and both of them are conference, uh, conference journal hybrids, as we would say. We call them transactions. The first that started that was the ISO Transactions on Symmetric Cryptology, or TOSC, available at tosc.iaco.org, replacing the proceedings of FSE. FSE is an area conference of ISCR focusing on fast symmetric encryption originally, but nowadays the scope is broader, uh, but mostly symmetric key, uh, yeah, as it says here, symmetric cryptology. Um, it is published together in a collaboration with the Bochum University Library and it's available gold, open access. This means you don't pay anything and everybody can access the publications there and we are relying a lot on our volunteer staff and on volunteer work at Bochum University for running this. The model of the operation of such a conference journal hybrid is as follows. Um, because there are issues throughout the year but there is only one conference in the year you can submit every three months and you are promised a fast review within the next three months or even two months similar to a conference and the decision can be um, accept conditional accept major revision or reject and then you can resubmit in case of a, minor, of a major revision the next or the after the next uh, deadline or uh, submission deadline and that creates a more permanent effect compared, uh, a more permanent dialogue between the authors and the reviewers slash editorial board members or uh, PC members of the forum conference. And if you're, um, and this is one of the goals of achieving the second goal of, of, of moving to this format was also to increase the number of papers that can be handled throughout the calendar year. The papers will be published online, as I said, um, the, it's, a, it's a journal, it's, we call it Transactions, and the opportunity, so the opportunity to speak at a conference does not go away, namely if you have a paper published in a certain interval, in a year long interval in TOSC, in these transactions, you will get a speaking slot at the corresponding conference. So if you want to be at FSE 2018, you have to have your paper accepted. Uh, January uh, 2018. That has been running for a year now, like this, and we just start, we will start, we are in the process of starting, the website is already there, and the slides are going to be online, by the way, on the ISR website, if you go to the documents of the ISR, the slides are pretty much the same as I've shown at Crypto and Eurocrypt this year already, so you can see them online there as well. 
So the transactions on cryptographic hardware and uh, embedded systems is replacing the proceedings of chess and will be published again in the same model together with Bochum University and will also be available to open access, uh, gold open access. So the next submission round for this is coming up in January. And then it follows the same uh, quarterly submission process as the as Toskos. So we have the same procedure now for these uh, two transactions, uh, these two IACL transactions. The conference proceedings in Springer are remaining five of them, as we have here, for example. Um, they are available online as well. You're probably aware of this if you have access to it uh, from your home computer instead of your university or corporate network and where you did not have a subscription. Then uh, you authorize to the ISL website at the website, uh, the ISL website, and you can get access to all current issues. However, after three years, through our deal with Spring, they become gold open access. That means they will be available online if older than three years to everyone. Everywhere. The ePrint archive is something else that we operate under the ISCR. The ePrint archive is a preprint server. It is offering rapid access to, uh, to uh, documents, to the, to the papers that people want to publish before they are, to, to release before they are published and approved. So it often serves as a timestamping server. And the uh, editors of the ePrint archive who look at close to 1,500 or maybe close to 2,000 submitted papers each year are Sasha Bodileva and the Duncan Lupin. There is an activity we, uh, that we started recently called uh, Schools in Cryptography, well, a couple of years ago. The ISCR sponsors, co-sponsors schools in crypto that are typically summer schools, winter schools, um, spring schools, whatever, don't, and if you have a good proposal for such an event, then we will not organize it for you, but we will give funding if it matches uh, our criteria and if there is not too much, uh, too many others who also would like to get such funding. So, for example, we have had a certain shortage of such proposals in the recent years. Uh, on the recent submission deadline, submission rounds. So we would, we will sponsor in early 2018 a school on information theory and crypto in uh, Bangalore, but we haven't sponsored, we haven't been able to sponsor more in that coming interval. So if you are interested in running a school or planning something in the second half, typically of 2018, applying for such co-sponsoring by the deadline. Uh, of December 31st is very much encouraged. IACR also organizes a fellows program. Each year a number of uh, members are selected as fellows for there was a different place here, yes, <laughs> for their contributions to IACR for their technical and uh, professional contributions to the field. Um, such as advancing the science and technology, promoting the exchange of ideas, and also developing skills in the sense of being teachers, and also promoting the IACR and the cryptology community with respect to others. So this year, the following five were selected by a fellows committee that runs independently of the board of directors. Um, Jan Kamenisch, Louis Yu, Komio Kim, Christoph Parr, and uh, Kenny Patterson, and at least Kwang Yu Kim is here. Congratulations again. The end of the year brings a lot of work for everyone, so there's a submission deadline here as well. If you uh, want to nominate someone, uh, please see the website, and the nominations are due December 31st. Okay, now we come to a financial report for which I would like to ask our treasurer, Brian, to join me here. Okay, I need that down. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 it takes a moment to actually get over here. 
so I'm out of the way of the screen. Uh -huh. Okay, so. All right, there we go. Oh, hope you can hear me. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Walken, your treasurer. Uh, I'm the person who takes your funds <laughs> and gives them back out. Uh, so let me tell you where things are. Uh, as of the end of last month, a couple days ago, uh, I've got everything uh, up to date as of that point from the banking side. Uh, our balance sheet's about even where it is last year, which means our assets were about the same place as it was last year, so we're not making a lot of money, we're not losing a lot of money. That's kind of good for a nonprofit organization. It's part not for profit. Uh, our administrative overhead continues to be very low. And in the long tradition of treasurers giving log base to numbers, uh, we have a robust financial position and our assets are about, log base two of our assets is about 21. Okay, so there you go. Uh, these numbers are current as to uh, what I pulled out of the Asia Crypt registration system yesterday. So here is attendance at all of our general and area conferences for the past three years. Uh, 2017, 2016, 2015, you can see I've got an age of 261, and I had 262 from last year according to the system, but basically age of this year is about the same size as, in terms of attendance as age of last year, and well above where it was two years ago, so great to see the growth there. Um, overall, you can see there's been growth in total attendance at the IACR consistent, uh, our total attendance across all of our events was 1719 to 2015, up 6.6% .6 to 2016, up 3.2% again this year, and next year I will add another column in for Real World Crypto because that symposium starts as an IACR event in January, that is next month in Zurich. Um, and I believe registrations for that are already top 300. Later. What? I'll mention later. You'll mention later. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess I can't talk about that. <laughs> um, now, I do not yet have FY17 numbers since we haven't closed. We run on a calendar year basis, and some people haven't turned in their final financial reports yet for conferences that have already happened. You know who you are. Um, here's the numbers for 2016 as to how our, where our income comes from, and then I'll show you the expenses, but basically, Eurocrypt, Crypto, Chez, and AsiaCrypt are their top four conferences, in roughly that order. And then TCC, PKC, and FSE come in. In terms of, uh, this is income, this is off registration fee income for those conferences. And you can see roughly where we, we spend the funds. And then if you look at our expenses, they are roughly in the same proportion because the, you know, we, while we have fixed costs on conferences, mostly it's determined by the number of attendees we have. We have size things. Um, now sometimes what happens here is I put seed money out ahead of time. So a lot of the age group funds on expenses here were, you know, what, you know, on all of these are seed money that we put out ahead of time. And in fact, I've already put down money in the sense that I have sent seed funds out to Eurocrypt 2019, um, to RWC for 2018, I think. Um, so I sort of pay bills ahead of time. That is, if you are running, if you're general chair, you ask for seed funds from me, I send you that, and then you give me back the leftover. And it goes back into the ISF coffers. Uh, highlights from this year, the one that you all would have noticed was we moved to a new uh, registration and credit card processing system. Uh, this was because I did an analysis early in the year of how much we were paying to process credit cards, and we were paying about 6.2%, uh, which they hid. Uh, we, we deal with Wells Fargo. And uh, when I asked them if they could do better than that, they dropped it to an effective rate of 5.7%, and we went over to Stripe that charges us an effective rate of 2.4%. So that alone, which we didn't have an effect for Eurocrypt, but started with crypto, and Chez and uh, TCC and AsiaCrypt, we've saved almost $20,000 in credit card processing fees on just what we've processed this year. That's more money we can use to support students and schools and things like that. Um, we can also accept sponsorship payments by credit card too. If you are a general chair, 
of a conference, one of our conferences, you actually have the ability to create sponsorship invoices in the registration system and have them paid that way. Um, it's a little bit more expensive for us to take a credit card for a $5,000 sponsorship than to take a wire transfer or better yet send me a check. Not made out to me, made out to the ISCR. Um, but um, we can do that and for some sponsors that's the easiest way to get them to sponsor and pay us. We now also can accept payment in Bitcoin. <laughs> if you want, uh, Stripe, our credit card processor, does that. And it's actually cheaper for us to process that. We only pay 0.4% to process Bitcoin transactions. We have received three registrations to RWC so far in Bitcoin as of yesterday. Okay, so thank you, whomever that is. Uh, the other thing that I did was I've been trying to, uh, given that we have log base to, you know, two to the 21 assets, roughly in dollars, I've been trying to make the short-term money that we have to hold on to work better for us. So we're getting 1% on a chunk of our short-term assets now through uh, use of basically a better savings account uh, locally. And the next thing that is my big project is to start tackling uh, sort of our endowment that we use to fund schools and students and things like that and to try to do a little bit better job on the investment side of that while still remaining conservative and appropriate to a nonprofit organization's long-term investments. And that's something that we have an investment committee within the board looking at. Um, I have one obligation at every, yes, sir. Are you going to hold out of the Bitcoins? Actually, we don't have the Bitcoins, right? Because Stripe converts them to dollars immediately. There's no float. So yeah, I know, we just lost out on it running up to 11,000 in Bitcoin. Um, I would prefer not to speculate on cryptocurrency. If you all want to do that, go right ahead. But I don't think that's a conservative and judicious use of the IACR funds. Okay? Now, if anyone wishes to donate Bitcoin to the IACR, I'm perfectly happy to take this. Um, I, have to I have to recommend the membership fee. That's my one task every membership meeting. At no time do I see any reason to change our fee from $50 per full member, $25 for a student member. If at any time I think we should raise or lower that, I'll let you all know. But for right now, that seems to be appropriate for funding the ongoing operating expenses of the organization. Because we do have, um, even though we're an all-volunteer organization, we have a certain amount of fixed costs every year that we have to pay in terms of running our Nevada business, filing our nonprofit tax return, uh, running the website, running, paying for the software that runs web sub rep, things like that, and all the all the journals. So there's a bunch of things that we uh, that we have to pay and that we have as ongoing expenses. That's about right to cover it. So at that, I am open to taking questions of a financial nature or anything else. Which I'll pass off to Christian. But <laughs> anyone got any questions? Yes. Are you aware of any guidelines for how much endowments? Uh, a nonprofit would typically have as a function of the number of members? No, I'm not. Um, I've never seen something like that um, in terms, I mean, I think you would really more look at what the endowment size should be in terms of what you want to fund off of it, not in terms of the membership size. Right, but if right. the endowment keeps growing, then it gives an opportunity to use part of that for the membership. That's, that's true. It's not growing as much as it should right now. Okay, but yeah, that's a that's a fair point. In fact, one of the, the first things we have to do, and this is what the investment committee or the endowment committee is going to do, is we have to formally define an investment policy statement for the organization. That's something that can be done as part of that. In terms of what's an appropriate goal for that, what are we trying to fund out of it, how much income do we want to generate out of it, that sort of thing. Um, frankly, I'm still trying to get a handle on how much we're actually spending to fund student speakers. Uh, we now, through the updates to the registration system that Doug Stabilo made, and Doug gets all the credit for this, have an ability to really track that and see, you know, get a handle on how much income do we have to generate to cover the things that we want to cover off of that. But it's a good point. Other questions? All right, well, I'm around. If anyone else got anything, come find me. Thank you.
Okay, so I'm now uh, presenting the membership secretary's report as of uh, the time at crypto, because Douglas Stabilat is not here, which uh, repeats some of the information that Brian had before, but in a different way. So here's the number of members, uh, which of course you see that many of them go to multiple conferences. Seven, seven, many of them go to multiple conferences, but then again, not too many, because you have like 1,600 or 1,800 attendants. So, so um, that means that uh, the total membership down here, yes, for 2017, as of August, was there. Um, that at 1,500, and we will certainly be able to increase this next year because of the first time when RWC, is now is the other event, the Real World Crypto uh, Symposium, I'll mention. The attendees there will be ISCR members only in 2019. Here's the source from where people became members. This is roughly by the calendar year. The first conference you go to is where you become a member. If you, not, uh, if you do not make it to a uh, event in any particular company, you can still register online and a lot of people do that here as well. Yes, so that's it for the report from the membership secretary. Now I want to go back to the my presentation here. Yes. Oh, online services. We are running a website at iaids.cr or iacr.org. The webmasters are Mike Kozalek and you, you, and you can present some of the things here, come in. <laughs> I just want to show you the slides because you haven't seen them yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't have a recursor about it. No, we didn't. Um, okay, so you know the website, so. <laughs> so yes, um, uh, um, so if you go to iacr.org, we have, you can, uh, so this, uh, you will receive alerts from from iacr.org slash news, you can receive, uh, you can see all the announcement. Actually, you can see the announcement at, at our main page of the website. And uh, ePrint uh, e report, you go to ePrint.iacr.org. And if you are looking for a job, and you can go to iacr.org slash jobs. And also, if, if you want, if you have an opening, and you want to advertise it, you can also go to the same URL slash jobs. Then you submit your uh, job description. Then, if we deem it's uh, interesting for the crypto community, community uh, actually the criteria is it's quite minimal. It's it, it's just uh, relevant to crypto, and it could be academic or it could be the industry related. Then I will, we will approve it, and it will appear at the. Uh, website as soon as we approve it. And also if you want to advertise your event, you can also go to the event page which is iacr.org slash events. You can submit your event which is uh, could be relevant to crypto or security. And it's actually we have more. Is it another page? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so well, this is now the publication. Yeah, publication. Yeah. That you can you know, you can also receive alerts from Facebook, uh, Twitter. But this way, what recently we have like you know the the, the, the firewall which oh. makes uh, the, the, this thing not working for the moment. Okay. <laughs> okay. And you can subscribe to our many many list. Okay, that's uh, actually we have also the PhD database. So PhD database. Yeah. Uh, so if, if, uh, if you are if you are a PhD and you want to publicize your PhD thesis, you can go to iacr.org PhDs and make a submission. And then once it's proved to you, everybody will see your PhD thesis. Let's go to the next slide. Yes. Uh, and then, uh, so this is the IACR application portal. So if you are, actually it's up to date and you can if you want to see the recent ICA publications, including all the com all the area and uh, uh, every conference and mega conference, then you go to ICA.org.publications. Then you, assuming you are an active 
ISDL member, meaning that if you attended just attended this conference or you just pay the membership fee, you can log in with your credentials, then you can already download every uh, uh, the recent ISA publications, including this uh, the proceedings for this conference. Okay. Um, Maybe there's more. Um, I don't know. Yes. Uh, <laughs> this is well. This, so is, this, is, this is more more <laughs> ISA. <ISL. laughs> so this is uh, we have ePrint, and you already know. And uh, if you have matters about ePrint, you can directly contact the uh, ePrint uh, editors. Okay. And you, uh, as already said, you can have access to all the all the electronic versions of the proceedings and this, this one, these two I already talked about. <coughs> and if you are interested in the very, very like seminal <coughs> historic crypto papers, you, could, you can go to the museum of the historical papers. And the, and we also maintain a bibliography about the, actually the all the published uh, crypto uh, ISCA publications. <coughs> and, and from time to time, we actually we have like these petitions. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, the PhD that is already mentioned. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs>
The board has also decided and is still deliberating a bit on a conflict of interest policy to be installed formally for the general conferences, that's Eurocrypt, Crypt and Asia Crypt, at least. <coughs> so the uh, existing policy and the guidelines was relatively relaxed, um, that each program chair would have a flexibility to uh, decide what constitutes a conflict. And since there is now for a number of years already the anonymous submissions, and since there are more people in the field and we're expanding the field also neighboring to other uh, topics, to other, to other communities where conflicts of interest are, are seen sometimes in different ways, where you talk to mathematicians from, from maths or, or theoreticians in crypto, or two people more from electrical engineering and, and systems engineering, they have all different notions of, of conflicts. And the board is trying to reach a uh, consensus on what should be the new policy. And this new policy will uh, include a few uh, steps here that are going to look reasonable for many, but also unreasonable for some. Um, but basically, uh, the board uh, decided that advisors and advisee have a conflict that within two years, if you were in the same institution with, with an author, you have a conflict. When you have two papers in three years, then you have a conflict. So it's not as simple as you had one paper in this year. And uh, yeah. And this is this is on the basis of, of uh, related policies in our uh, fields, neighboring fields. And the detailed document is still in the making, so you haven't been able to see this. But we are talking to our program chairs about this as well. I think we can uh, we can dis if anybody wants to discuss something about that instead of later in the discussion, this will be a good time uh, now if somebody has a question about that specific topic or this discussion. Yes, I suppose the only question is how to enforce it because you're going to rely on people self. Well, the question is how to enforce it. Yeah. It's difficult to enforce, yes, but I think the first uh, step of enforcing is even informing. And that's why the submission system must have an option where you as an author select the people according to these rules and making it transparent that this constitutes a conflict is already the first work. That's actually now uh, a duty of the authors. And it's a more formal duty of the authors with the research policy than it was in the past. And also PC members. And uh, PC members, of course, PC members should not see all the authors, but uh, I'm afraid that it shares uh, if they take their work very literally, they will have to check uh, 340 papers times five authors times uh, 50 program committee member relations, which is too much, obviously. <laughs> um, so we are relying on everyone here. Um, and even though submissions are anon anonymous, remain anonymous, sometimes it's clear to some people who the authors are, then they will be able to raise something and discuss. The program chair has full visibility into authors as, as usual. And so this is, um, this is something where we call the community to action in a way where, uh, or in response to some critique we have also received from, from other fields where, have, where they have strong uh, uh, confidence. Okay? Yes? Uh, can the authors define then a new, uh, their own COI during the time of the submission? Well, that I don't like this PC. And I think this guy doesn't deserve to review, review my paper. I can, you know, the system can just take a, a CLI and I can specify a yes. or just leave it. Well, I if you, you, mean, you mean like negative I mean, solution? Just just I know that he or she hates me, so I will mark yeah, it off. Yeah. Right. <laughs> now, that is a delicate question. There will be a phrase on this in the, in the policy document. It should not be the case that you do this as an author. But as I said before, we are relying here on authors honestly to declare this. Uh, correct, yeah. Uh, it may be the case, of course, that the program chair realizes that uh, person A declares conflict with person B, whom they never jointly publish together if they have such a conflict of the kind you mentioned. <laughs> Did you mention that, okay. uh, Is there any ongoing work to make sure the submission software will at least capture the affiliations in a canonical way? <coughs> That's a good suggestion. I think it's not capturing affiliations in a canonical way. I'm not sure if it captures affiliations 
at all. Here we are usually expecting that the submissions of the, the, the submitters would know with whom they share institutional affiliation. Part of this, if you're in Google or in a company like IBM, this can be large, but part of this is also defining here, and this, this wording is not completely out, whether different locations of the same global company count as the same institution or not. Yes? So does the system also check the same for sub-reviewers? The system cannot check this for the sub-reviewers, but uh, the, that's why more communication should be needed. But the system, I mean, we cannot automate everything, and, but declaring a policy that people should respect should be a first step. Like, if somebody sends me my paper for sub-review, then I should say, no, I'm an author, right? <laughs> I should not say, on the other hand, which reportedly has happened, I'm writing a very good review because I cannot reveal that I'm the author to the PC member. Yeah? You're laughing, but I've heard such cases. Yeah? Okay. Um, other board discussions are creating a time, a test of time award. Uh, this is something that the, the TCC uh, conference has. And an ongoing discussion about diversity in various dimensions, gender, regional. And so on. So I think this brings me to the end of the planned program, and there is now time for an open discussion and questions. Yes? So I have one request about submission server or submission system. It's about comment order. So now, so many conferences, including generic conference and the ADA conference, adopted a uh, reversal system. And so the, so the authors have opportunity to reply to the comment. The, the, the issue is the comment received by the email, the comment order received by email and the received by the, or in the submission system are sometimes different. Mm -hmm. and, uh, okay, so you're saying that, uh, that, that the, after a rebuttal, the response to the rebuttal of the authors is not fully integrated. I think this is probably recognized by the uh, editor by the people who maintain the system. But I have to say that that system that we are using was produced in volunteer work mostly by Shai Halevi. And I think his, his interest to grow it to, to many more features has sort of faded a bit. So we rely on others to help him here. If you can do PHP, then uh, <laughs> I'm waiting for your email. <laughs> No, I mean that actually that's a discussion we've had uh, a while ago whether uh, new features we should add them to web sub ref or whether we should try to, to use a different system. Unfortunately, there are not so many different systems. And, and, and people here have become used to the, that system uh, quite a lot. So um, there's a certain inertia, inertia to change, but because there are also, also some special things that we have added to the system that the ICR wants to do. But, um, we are considering the submission server software as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yes? So I think the remark was essentially that if you get the mail for the rebuttal, the, mail, the, the, the reviews are in a different order than in the submission system, that some review, some authors say uh, in a reply to review one and a reply to review two. I think it's just that the, the, the chairs who just make a suggestion in the mail that make clear to which review you're referring. I mean, that's Okay, I wasn't aware of that specific issue. I could imagine that in contrast to some other system that this system randomizes the order of the reviews. Because other systems sometimes don't, and then they, they thereby leak some information on who. Yeah? <laughs> if you do it in alphabetical order, then you'll leak a lot of information. <laughs> Okay, then, I ex then this is a comment that I would like you to send to us so that we can distribute it to the program chat, yeah? <laughs> Anything else that we people want to bring up? If not, then uh, I think I have the travel program here coming up, which is after the real world crypto, it's going to be Eurocrypt in uh, Tel Aviv. 
There's going to be crypto in Santa Barbara in August. There's going to be Asia Crypt in uh, Brisbane in a year. And there's going to be Eurocrypt in 2019 in Darmstadt. And there's going to be crypto in Santa Barbara in 2019. And there's going to be Asia Crypt in Japan. And that's about as much as I can tell you now. Except for crypto, I would now guess that it's going to be Santa Barbara. <laughs> but we have had indeed like discussion about diversity among North American or among American countries about where to run crypto. Mm -hmm. Canadians have uh, made a mistake, yeah. So, uh, but then now there's the ERA conferences, uh, as I mentioned, real crypto, there's FSC, there is PKC in Rio, and there's going to be Chess in Amsterdam next year and TCC in uh, Goa, India. And I think that's it. Now there's an FSC also in 19 already fixed, and I think. Many of you are already involved in planning future events. Um, that's it for me, uh, from my side for tonight. We will see each other at the round session. Thank you.